You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Here is a complete video of a maker set from start to finish. If you want to skip ahead to specific points in the video, then check the description below for skip times. Enjoy! Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and it's time for us to finally do the Queasy Bake Cookerator. Create gross looking, great tasting snacks with a magical surprise. So, been waiting to get to this one because of the mix. We didn't really have any complete mixes. We have some of them, but this was the mix we were waiting for. It is the Queasy Bake Queasy Cookies with Larvalicious Cocoon Cookies and Dip and Drool Dog Bones. So that's the mix we're going to do today. The actual Queasy Bake Mixerator required special mixes, which we don't have, but we're still going to take it out, take a look at it, and see how it works. And then here is the main Queasy Bake Cookerator. So uh, I'm excited to show that to you. But I wanted to go over the Light Bulb Baking Book because... We brought this in in the past, it kind of gives you some insight into the history. And as you can see, there's an image in the inside of the oven that's kind of showing through with the eyes and the mouth. Little bugs on it. And then here was some uh, history and details from the past. Let's just read a little bit here. This oven was marketed as providing everything boys need to make ooey gooey gross looking treats that taste great. So it was purple, green, and yellow. And this is what was in the box at the time. Now we've got everything there, but of course all the mixes. And again, it's powered by one 100 watt light bulb. And here's some information. With the Queasy Bay Cookerator, Hasbro tried to tempt boys aged 8 and older to get in on the fun. While the form factor of the toy remained similar to the Easy Bake Oven and Snack Center, the color palette was darker with neon accents. The oven was also tricked out with spiders, skulls, and bones. And here it says, in 2003, the mixes were expanded to include... Toe Dough Cookies, Black Widow Spider Cake, Martian Invasion Cookies, Bed Bug Cakes, and Awful Waffles. Despite these efforts, the Queasy Bake never enjoyed the sales success of its predecessors. Alright, so now we've learned a little bit about it. Let me, uh, what I'll do is I will bring in the Mixerator first and we'll just take a look at that box. So, remember, there are timestamps in the description, so if you want to get right to the mixing part or a certain part of the video, look there and you can skip ahead if you want. For everybody else, stay tuned. All right, here is the Queasy Bake Mixerator. I like showing the boxes just to see the artwork and what was on them at the time, ages 8 plus. It looks like it was originally $17.99 at Ames Toys. We got it secondhand, of course. Includes sewer sludge shake. And then this is the, you know, the ingredients and the nutrition information, which we don't have those mixes. And then here's uh, basically how it worked. Create great, create gross looking, great tasting drinks. And he looks pretty excited about it, so we'll see how exciting it is. He's excited also. And that's really it. So the top kind is a repeat. So that is the box. Now let's take a look at the mix that we're going to do. All right, so we are going to do the Queasy Bay Queasy Cookies. Larvalicious Cocoon Cookies. It says, cocoon shaped snacks filled with color change, larva-like bugs and worms. Crunchy cookie treats with foaming drool. And that's really just a little bit of ingredient information. Of course, the uh, nutritional facts. Uh, Larvalicious Cocoon Cookies. Create color change bugs and worms, bake them in the cookie cocoon, and take a bite. Your tongue changes colors. This is going to be really interesting how this is going to work. If it's going to work, I have no idea. So that is the mix we're going to do. So let's take a look at the box of the actual oven. All right, so here is the box for the Queasy Bake Cookerator. And i got to tell you, the uh, caricature image there, I don't know. I wish they used a real kid there. But dip and drool, dog bones. I only point it out because I'm sure other people are going to point that out. Create gross-looking, great-tasting snacks with a magical surprise. Uh, drip and drool dog bones, which I said, mud and crud cake. So those are the mixes that came with it. We don't have them. There's a mold in there, it looks like. I think all the panels are pretty much the same. Ah, oh, there are some happy boys. Check them out. He's got a green tongue. He's baking a cake over here. So there is a pan pusher, a couple tools like they said. And here's what the mud and crud looks like. Now, I wish we had that. We don't. And the dip and drool dog bones is the one in the bonus mix that we got. And I think that's really it. This side panel kind of just shows the oven and the brain on top. Same with that. So I think we've covered it all. Yep. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to get everything out of the boxes now. And we'll just take a look at uh, each of the items. 
All right, here we go. Let's uh, go over the Mixerator first and what came with that. It's basically the unit, the instructions, the mixes, and a little green cup. And everything has this theme on it, as you can tell. Bugs, there's bugs there on that. And this goopy, like it's dripping down the cup. It kind of works its way down the outside of the pitcher. There's a bug in there. The paddle that spins is an actual bug. And then the lid, well, I'll show you that more when we start working with that. Now the oven came with the brain, and that's on the top, that's the warming area. One tray, a mixing bowl, and there's that goopy theme that's carried throughout. Dog bone, and a little tool here for like cutting and like a spatula. And here's another cutter with the teaspoon measure in there in the shape of a bug, see? Then here's your pan pusher, little ants all over it. And there's the line you mark out when you push it in the oven, more bugs. And we even had a sticker that wasn't actually put on the oven. It's supposed to go on the front down here, so I'll do that in a little bit. And as you can see, like they said, there's a bug on the outside, kind of this dial here with little things inside of it to creep you out, and a lever that you'd think when you'd pull to turn on electricity, and then all these like um, bolts to make it look very mechanical. So there you go. That is the two tools we're going to be using today. So let me move the mixer out. We'll start with the oven, and maybe when things are baking, We'll bring in the mixer and go over that in a little more detail. So I'll be right back. Well, we are back. And uh, as you can see, the oven is on. Pretty neat to see the lights inside there. I'll show you that a little bit later in the dark because it is pretty cool. And then I have the mix ready. Everything's been washed. Now this little bug mold, I don't think I had out originally. You couldn't see it on the table. I wanted to show that to you. And it's got the little bug shapes. And I'm not sure if that's needed with the mixes we're using today. So let me, uh, let me do this. Let me move out everything. You've seen it. It's washed and ready to go. So are the pans. I want to get my sticker on there, you know, to kind of finalize the oven. Queasy bake. Imagine that. It's been in the box with the sticker and never applied to the front of the oven. So that's going to go right about here. That's where I want it. Okay. And then let's see. The mix. Let me get that out of the box and show you that. So here is the larva pan and that's actually been washed and ready and then all these mixes come with this set there's quite a few so this video is going to be pretty involved you've got the foaming drool you've got two foaming drools you got an a and a b you have the color change larva mix you have the cool cocoon mix and then a cool drool mix and then a crunch dog bones mix I think I, did I get the mix instructions out? Oh, I left them in the box. And then here are the instructions. Let me tilt that down a little bit. So we'll be following this group of instructions. Now the oven itself, the cookerator, had its own instructions. So I'll just show that for everybody maybe who has the oven and missing the instructions. Here's the important side. This right here. How to do the bulb. How it works. So... If anybody's missing that, there you go. Hopefully that will help you out. And then the other side of the instructions is basically all the mixes that originally came with the oven. So we can't do any of those. So that's why we're going to focus on this here. Preheat your Queasy Bay Cookerator for 15 minutes. So we just started, it's probably been heating up for about 7. And then the first step is actually for the dip and drool dog bones. Prepare a clean surface for making the dog bone. Open crunchy dog bone mix packet, remove half teaspoon of mix, and sprinkle onto this clean surface. And then, looks like you're adding water in the mix here in step two. So I think we're ready. We have our sticker on the oven. I need to grab a few more supplies, and we'll get started doing the first mix. All right, I am ready to begin. I hope you're as excited as I am about getting this started. It's a pretty unique oven and uh, unique mixes. I just wanted to show you on the mix pack... Here's everything that's included, here's everything you will need. So I had to get the bowls, the rolling pin, um, let's see, well the cutter came with it and pan pusher says came with the queasy bag. Non-stick spray or margarine, and then flour. So I brought in a little, my cutting board, and then uh, here's the mix. Here is the bowl, because I think the bowl that came with the queasy bake is too small, so that's why they have you grab extra bowls. So first things first, I need some scissors. And we will get started here. So let me go right to the recipe. 
Step one, prepare a clean surface for making the dog bone. Open crunchy dog bones mix packet, remove half of a teaspoon of mix and sprinkle onto clean surface. All right, so there we're gonna do that first. And it says pour remaining contents of packet into mixing bowl. All right, so I can do that all right now, here we go. Just wanted to break up the pack a little. And let's see what it looks like inside. So it's a powdery white powder. Mm -hmm. Let's go for it. So a half of a teaspoon on the tabletop. Okay, and then the rest in the mixing bowl. Let's go for it. Okay, step one. So this could be sprinkled around, but I'm gonna wait a little bit till I get this going. So pour remaining, okay, add three quarters of a teaspoon. Let me get my teaspoon so I can do this three times. One, two, and three. And stir with a spoon. We'll use one of their little spatula tools here. It says stir with a spoon until mixed thoroughly. All right. So this is supposed to make a dough because we got to cut shapes out of it. That's why there's just a little bit of water in there. Then the next step was to uh, lightly flour clean hands. Okay, so I got to do that. I got the flour off to the side. And form the dough into a ball. So I'm going to actually have to be able to pick this up and form it and shape it. Flatten dough on a clean, cooked, uh, cookie-dusted surface. Okay. And then use a roller to roll out about a quarter of an inch thick. It does take a while to get, since there's not much liquid, to get it all mixed together. At least that's what we've seen on other sets. Your initial instinct would be to just keep adding water, but that's not how it works. I do like to press it sometimes. That helps to mix it better or combine it. You know, we've done quite a few of these videos, so if you haven't seen them, then you need to check our channel and go back to the beginning, all the way to the first oven from 1964. And now we're in the 2000s. This one is about 2002 in that area. Okay, now it looks like I can start pressing this more. I don't know if it can go into a ball. Sometimes it's, it is easier just to get your hands in there. So I'll flour them and do that. All right, I think we're close to forming here. So let me spread this out a little bit here. Oops, hit the camera there. All right. And let's get this going here. Flour my hands. Oh yeah, nice. Probably easier just to work it out onto the table here. Look, space. So this is what I'll do. You could feel like some of it's really wet and some of it's dry. So it's just a matter of working it around. There, now we're talking. I think I've noticed on most of these, it's really a dry, drier type dough. See how quickly that changed now? Pick up the rest here. Okay, so now we're able to shape it a little. Clean off my fingers. Get all that in there. Everything that fell off, everything that's over there and there. All right, there, I think we're good. I have my dough. I don't know how many cookies it's going to make. We'll find out. Okay, so use a roll to roll about a quarter of an inch thick. Got my little roller. I've used this before. Doesn't look like it makes a lot. Okay, I think that's good. And then sprinkle a small amount of flour into the dog bone cutter, then firmly press down. All right. Let's just do this. 
Okay, and press down. That's simple enough. I'm thinking that whole thing makes maybe two bones. There's one. Maybe I can rework this and make a second. I hope so. Let's give it a shot. I might have to roll just a little bit thinner to get that second one. It's going to be close. Actually, if I take this and just move it here, that's good. Okay, so we got two out of it. All right, the next step. Well, let me do this. Let me clean up a little, and then we'll do the next step. Be right back. All right, we are close to getting these in the oven. Pretty excited about that. So they wanted you to just get your pans ready with spray. So sometimes I use butter, but I'll just do that off to the side so it doesn't get over everything here. There's one, and here is two. Okay, and then let's get them in there. While I was uh, cleaning up, I just took the leftover dough and made a little round biscuit out of it. So there's one, and there is two, and maybe I'll see if I can squeeze. I got a pan. Well, maybe I'll bake that later. I'm not sure, but now that is out of the way. We don't need it. So let me get this first cookie into the oven. So here we go. Now we've shown all the other ovens being pushed in. Let's see if you can see from the side there. And remember now there's a mark on here. You want to hit it. And that's when you stop. Okay, so now it is in. So let's check this out in the dark. All right, here you go. This is what it looks like in the dark. You can kind of see the hint of the purples in here and the green front. Here's the actual window you're supposed to be able to look in. Let me just zoom into that and see if we can see any better. It's hard. The camera's having a hard time because it's so bright on the face. How's that? And I think our cookies, the first batch is close to being done, so... Now the rest of the oven kind of illuminates this purple. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. Can you see that there? A little extra light coming in. So this is the purple. This is the brain on the top. I guess you could bake in the dark if you want. It looks pretty cool that way. Let me zoom in again here. So I think our first dog bone is set. Let me check and I'll be right back. Alright, so there's about 15 seconds. I wanted to show you as best I can here. It's like a hazy uh, plastic here so it's really difficult to see inside and then uh, let me get my next pan ready zoom out just a little oh there it goes let me turn it off all right let me push this one all the way through now you won't be able to see it oh well, you kind of see the pan pusher that other door opens and then it's going to come out this end Ooh, look at that effect that's pretty neat so there it is. There is the first one. So let me push the second one in. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at the glow. Here we go. So when that one is done, we'll be back and we'll go on to the next step. All right. So the second set of the second dog bone is actually inside here. It's still cooking. The timer will go off probably by the time we're done here. And while that's happening, we can get to the next next recipe. It's the Larvalicious Cocoon Cookies. And it's a couple steps. It's first taking this and mixing that. And then I notice it says, place packet of color change larva mix in the warming cha chamber. Here's the color change larva mix. It looks like they just want you to put the whole packet up there and let it sit. It doesn't say move it to a bowl. So I can do that. and just leave it there. I guess it's going to heat up enough to melt it. We'll find out. And then uh, let's get on to the recipe here. So it says, uh, place, pour the contents of the cool cocoon mix packet into a mixing bowl. All right. There's a mixing bowl. This is an extra one that I brought in. Remember these, the red bowls weren't included. They had you bring in extra items and supplies. Ooh, this one is green. Check it out. All right. And then it says, let me just break that up a little bit. It's been packed in there so long. So 
what it looks like to me is that um, I'm making a gummy product with the first mix. That's the one that's heating up now. That actually gets put into the molds. And i got to refrigerate that, come back, and put that into the cookie dough mix side. All right. So, now, uh, uh, add one and a half teaspoons of water and stir with a spoon. Okay. One and a half. Now, this is a one teaspoon. And then I'm going to do a couple quarters here just to be as precise as possible. There's one and a half. And now let's mix it up. So now we're making another dough. And stir with a spoon until mix clings together. Okay. Alright, it looks like it, you know, once you start pressing, isn't that a cool color? Clings together. Is it clinging? It's close. I think with a little more mixing we'll be right there. Well, while I'm doing this, I'll just read a little bit more. Okay, so that's got to sit up there on top for 10 minutes, so it hasn't been that long. And I need to push out my other cookie, so let me do that now. Alright, here we go. I usually set my timer for a little less time to give me some prep here. This should be cooled and ready. So my first dog bone is ready. It's brown around the edges. And let's push it in all the way through now. So it's going to come out this end. You got to see a cool perspective in the dark the last time. Hey, there it is. And you know, I made that little extra one. I'm going to stick that one in there now. And push that in part way. Okay. So we have one cooling. We have the pack on the top. Lots going on here. And then I'm still mixing this. Maybe I'll just get a little closer here. I think it's gonna, you know, it's always easier to do on my cutting board than in the little bowls, but that's better. I think we're close now. So I have to wait some time now for that packet on the top. It's probably only been two or three minutes up there. Surprised I have you mix this first. It's gonna sit now for 10 minutes. Oops. Okay, get in there. Let's try to save this too. All right, well, this will probably just cut out at some point, and we'll be back when the stuff on the top. We'll check that in, say, five minutes. This looks ready, nice and moldable. It's almost a lump now. See that? And then uh, we'll check back. All right, so the last cookie is done, and I uh, it's been cooling here. I'm ready because I've been waiting for this to completely melt, and it's ready. So the first thing I need to do is get the... Bug molds. Now, I thought you were using the larva, but the larva molds are for the cookies when you're ready to bake them. This is for making the little insects that go inside the larva. They don't really tell you which insects, so I'm not sure how many. They really don't give you any of that information. They just say to spray the mold. So let me do that. I don't know if this is gummy or what this product is. Now, I've been kind of working it. You can see it's really mushy, and I have it near the end. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit here. Hopefully it's just enough to squeeze out. Yep, there it is. And then I'll just fill some of these little compartments here. Or molds, whatever you want to call it. Looks like it's enough for that one. Almost too much. I didn't know the, I don't know the real consistency, so 
we tap it down and see. It's got to get all the way to the other end here. Not bad. It's a strange color. It's like a pasty white. Looks like I'm going to have enough here to do all of these. So I might as well just fill them. I don't know what I'm going to be able to use or not use. That one's tiny. There you go. There's still a bunch in here. It's not super, super uh, liquidy. You know, there's still some resistance there. It's not just forming to the mold right away. Just see how nice they all fill. Let's get a little top down view so you can see that. Looks like I can use a tiny bit in a few of these. So what I need to do is get this in the refrigerator. So they need to set, so that's good. Alright, so when I get these in the refrigerator come back and go to the next step but there's quite a bit still in there be right back all right well I had a few minutes here while the uh, larvae were uh, chilling in the refrigerator and I uh, thought I'd show you the mixer now this is basically very similar to the girls version of the easy bake mixer and it's built the same pretty much the inside components here this piece here is the same except this one uses you know the bug as the paddle but this is exactly the same as that other one and I did give it a quick test to see nothing's leaking on this one which is good and it seems to be far more powerful inside here is where the the bug panel goes there's just two little holes put that in there set that on there so I thought well I don't have the actual mixes for this but I can still mix something to test it like I did with the other one so let me put some water in here got it off to the side okay go right up to the top of the little bug in there and then you press this button now watch this one goes pretty good let's do a top-down view here kind of do a little quick adjustment and here's top down so I would say this one spins uh, pretty nice. Now I got some red food color here. Might as well do red, right? We're doing queasy bake, strange stuff. Here we go. Just watch the color change. Let's make it really bright. Nice. I want to get a close up from the side again because it is kind of neat seeing the spinning. This took two C batteries, which I had put in already. Let me put the lid on there. Will that have an effect? No, it will not. That's pretty cool. Let me clean this out and do it one more time with another color. All right, so let me just turn that around a little so you can see the base. It's still pretty neat. It looks like it's got drips down. And then this looks like the front of the Easy Bake, one of those electrical levers that you pull down. And when we get the mixes for this and stuff to actually doing it, we'll make an update video of this one here for sure. Let me put some yellow in there and see what happens. I put more water in it this time also. Okay, yellow, hard to see, but I wanted to do that so that I can mix in some blue. It's about to go over the edge. Now I made a nice green. Yeah, why not throw in some red and see what happens. Ooh, that really darkened it up. Did you see that? So it's almost like a, it's hard to tell, purple almost. Brownish. You can't see the guy inside there anymore. All right, let's, uh, well, hold on. I'll be right back. All right, now we're looking straight in, so we'll check it out at this angle. I'm going slow purposely. There, I didn't press it in all the way. So you can see the paddle. It's got, good, got a good spin behind it, I think.
That's cool to look at. All right, well, I guess I can't play anymore because I need to get ready for the next step in the uh, oven side of things, so we'll be right back. All right, here we go. They came out of the refrigerator, and it's set up like chocolate. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Let me just see it. They should just hopefully pop out. Well, let's just see. Hopefully, they pop out. Oh, there we go. I did spray it, so... Oh, there we go. A little turning and bending always helps. Okay, see they still have a little of the cooking spray on them. There you go. Come on, little larva. Bugs. Yeah, let me see. I got my toothpick here. Oh, there we go, that helps. I guess I could have just done that. There they are. There's all of the little little boogers, buggers, whatever you want to call them. Now I'm supposed to use this next. Let me spray it. Okay, and then make the little balls. Here it says, uh, place cocoons in special cocoon baking pans. I'm kind of getting an idea how much will fill each one. And I don't know if I want them to be like bigger. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Let me just get five shapes here and see where we're at, where it ends up. Two. So we have one, two. There's three. Then here's what is left over. It doesn't seem like it's enough, but they're all pretty close. Right. All right, so remove newly formed larva from bugworm mold and push it into the center of the ball of cool cocoon mixture so that it is hidden. Repeat for other cool cocoon balls. All right. I'm just kind of rolling in here. Let me see if I can back up the camera a little bit, get a little more room in here. Here we go. All right, so stick a bug in there in the center. All right, and stick it in my mold. And I have to, it is sticky, stickier than most doughs I've worked with. Okay. Two. I'm gonna have some extra bugs. Three. Well, that means I could eat one, right? Get in there. Get in there, buddy. Four. I don't know why I'm counting out loud. It's just, you know, I guess a, a mental or verbal cue for me to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Okay. I want to form them down a little bit. Let me see. Hold on a second. Let me grab my flour because it's really sticky. Okay. Sometimes I put things away and... Not realize I'm going to need them again. They look really tall with all that. I wish they'd give you a little bit more insight on to how many you need. and I hope that slides through. I'll find out. I'll have to do a quick test to make sure it slides through and doesn't catch. I might have to remove some dough. But you do want them a little poopy, right? Maybe I could just flatten this side. You can kind of see that one in there a little bit. All right, let me clean up and push it in the oven. All right, from this perspective, it looks like it's going to work. Let me get my timer set here. It said six to eight minutes. I'm hitting start. And then, see, it looks like it's going to fit. And clear the first level. This one maybe not. Push this down just a little bit. I have no idea how these are going to bake. And then let's go. Okay. 
it's in. So maybe they're just going to be big and puffy. We'll see. We'll check them when they're done. All right, I thought we'd just show you in the dark one more time. Maybe put on a little music and go for about a minute or so, just so you can look at the front of the oven. <laughs> Raisins and those low fat bars are cute. If it hollers out for sugar, I can always feed it fruit. Then there's pretzels and there's juices. And there's vegetables and milk. And popcorn without butter. Snacking healthy is very hip. I like healthy food. I try to be real good. Can't be defeated by a little snack attack. Here it comes now. It's on the All right, so you're seeing the opposite side because it's hard for me to push through with this particular shape of a pan. So I'm gonna at least get it part way. It seems to wanna catch up on the door and not push out. It is a strange shape pan. There we go. All right, let me flip it around now and see if you can see from the other side. All right now I should be able to complete the process. It's just hard to see when you're working from the opposite side you should be working from. There it goes. It looks like I've got some blue coming out. Pretty neat. So I gotta let these cool and uh, they survive. So when I let them cool, come back and we'll finish up everything. The dog cookies and then our larva cookies. Alright, so here we go. Uh, a couple things I probably would do differently. Maybe I was, I'd probably cut this back just a little bit. But if uh, you want to use more of these... Then, of course, you'd have to bake them, let them cool, bake them, let them cool. So it would take a little bit longer. I wish they would just tell you cut into, you know, eight equal shapes and, and do it that way. But there's really no guidance there. And this is, like I said, like a, a chocolate candy. And it's sweet. I'm not sure if it's actually... Oh, it does change a little color. It goes to blue when it heats up. So that's probably what happened here. You're just not supposed to see it when you initially here let me break one open just to see if we could see while well, it's still a little warm if it's gooey inside ah look at that let's eat that hmm it's actually quite tasty okay so oops hit the camera I need to do the next step for the dog treats. This is the dog drool. So the first thing I need to do is pour the contents of the cool drool mix into a bowl and add three cups of water. Let me get this cut so I can break it up a little bit. Let's see what the cool drool looks like on the inside. It's a pinkish color. It smells like Kool-Aid. Yep. Okay. Okay. And a third of a cup of water and stir with spoon. Mm, I don't know what those little particles were. It does remind me of the crazy kits that we've done where you're actually mixing a powder like this. Okay, so it has thickened up. Yeah, it sure does. It smells good. It's sweet. Okay, I think I got all the chunks out of there. There's some bubbles. Then it says, pour contents of foaming drool eruptor mix A and B into a small dry mixing bowl. Let me do that. Let's get this out of here though. We don't need this right now. Lots of bright colors here. Now, that's a small mixing bowl. So this is the bowl that actually came with it. So here is mix A, foaming drool. If Butch were here now,
And then Foaming Drool Eruptor Mix B. Yes, Butch would be having a blast. I didn't sniff the first one. Let me see this one. No real flavor smell that I'm getting. And it says, uh, and stir to mix, okay? Boy, this has been a long process. Okay. Then it says, dry mixing bowl and stir to mix. Okay, pour mixture into the drool. Watch it foam. Dip the dog bone into the foaming drool and take a bite. It's gross looking, but great tasting. All right. I've got my bones here. Here we go. Let's see. As it is foaming. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, I think that's, it didn't say to mix it, but I helped it along. Let's, uh, yeah, it's like a drink mix. So now I'm supposed to take my bone. Mmm, drooly mix. Here we go. What do you think? Would you give this a, would everybody give this a bite? Mmm, I'm eating a dog bone. Now the actual cookie itself, not a lot of flavor. This is really overpowering. You get that sugary sweet taste. Hmm. It's very crispy. That was the thinnest one. Well, I can say it doesn't taste bad. It's not the best cookie I've ever had. Let's get some more stuff in here. These are still warm. My larva and my dog bone treats. How am I going to recap this one? Well, I wish I was able to do more of the mixer for you. So the only bonus we have is that, you know, we'll come back when we find the right mixes for that. The larva, that was interesting. That was kind of like the first stick something in a cookie and then bake it. And you can see it did change colors. The dog bone and the saliva mix or dog drool, they were okay. I mean, this is really sweet. So overall, I think it was a great success. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took what I've been saying for the last two or three weeks, waiting for that one recipe packet for this. So it takes a while to kind of gather all the supplies and get ready for a video like this. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, you know, which one you would want to try. And then uh, if you want to see more videos in the Easy Bake series, then look at the description for a playlist or search our channel. And thanks to everybody who is sharing and supporting Lucky Penny Shop. It's really appreciated. Later! If you want to find this item, click the link in the description area below the video. You can also watch more videos in this series by clicking here. Thanks for watching. And always remember, if you see a lucky penny, pick it up.